friendly greetings. It's Torley Linden, and I love to teach you cool new things to empower and make your second life a happier one. Today, we're going to look at sculpted prims. You may have seen all sorts of neat objects in the world and wondered how they were made when someone told you it's sculpty. Well, what we're looking at right now, this is a program called Sculpty Paint, and it's by a resident of Second Life named Cell Edmund. It's available for free download for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And of course, he appreciates donations, but it's neat and fun that he's made this available. It's both a great way to get acquainted with Sculpties, and see, I'm just clicking on this to rotate it. And I was saying it has more advanced tools too, if you need to get into them. So we're not going to explore everything, and we're going to do what's proverbially called scratching the surface, the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> but it should be enough to really energize you and get you very, very intrigued to do more and express yourself creatively. First of all, let's look right here. There's different kinds of tools for creating different kinds of Sculpty prims. And right here, we have the resolution. Now, 32 by 32 approximates closely what you'll see in Second Life. So although it's a lower resolution, let's click that so we can be a little more accurate. And right here, we can see the model in different ways. Right now, we just have a spear. <laughs> and we can go from color to solid mode to a wire frame and texture. If you want to texture map it, you can do that too. We can also change the Sculpty type. And if you want to have a flatter look, you can turn off the lighting by clicking this mini light bulb icon. This whole layout here reminds me of some of the, the video jockey applications I was using way back, uh, demo scene days and all that. But here, see that? And you can turn off the grid too. Now let's go to the flower tool. This is just a really, really fun thing to do. Click the flower tool button here. And what you can easily uh, do next is click on reset to flower form and this will make a flower and the colors you see here are the colors of this of the texture not the sculpt map texture and I'll show you the difference between those but the texture map that's applied onto the sculpted prim it's pretty cool because you can randomize the texture as you see right here and change the colors of the flower so I like this this is very nice you can randomize the leaves the texture, text is short for texture there, and you can change the root. And you can make the stem right here. If you want to make the stem a little more curved, you can do that by clicking out here. And notice that the model will also change when you do that. So just let's make it more organic. You can change other sorts of shapes. You can add additional leaves, make it a wild one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's leave it like that. And then what you can do next is you can use other tools in conjunction, but we'll want to come back here and I'll show you why. Next, let's have a look at this point tool. With this point tool, and notice I'm just clicking and dragging to rotate the model, you can just change the smoothness. So if I want to smooth things out, I could click that once and you'll see it be smoothed. See, and it has, this is effective too if you're making a cube and you want to have rounded corners. So let's push that one more time. All right, that's a little more smooth. And then let's go over here to, I believe it's the drawing tool. The drawing tool will let you directly manipulate these points and you can extrude them. So I'll show you this, it's a good view. As I said, if you've never been using a 3D application before, this is just a fun way to really immerse into it. And you can just click these points and then you can click and hold out here and make it jagged and you can push them back in if that's your sort of thing. And they're kind of being pushed out like disks. And woo, that's pretty fun. And so now that we have that, we can go back to the point tool. You can use these tools in combination with each other. There's even a stairs tool, an arch tool to make certain geometric constructs. Like if you want to make a single flight of stairs with a single sculpted prim. And then let's smooth that one more time. And let's prepare this now for export. I'll show you how easy it is to get it into Second Life so you can enjoy it and show it off to your friends. Let's go back now to the flower tool. And now that we have all this here, what we can do is we can click here. And the reason why we want to come back to the flower tool is because it will save the sculpt map. Uh, it will save it so you can get that geometry loaded into Second Life. And it will save the colors on the texture we can expect to see something similar to this within the in-world experience when we're back there. Let's go ahead and click Save 128 by 128 Sculpt Image PNG. 
and then it'll tell us that it's saved. Okay, great, it's saved into that folder. So I'm gonna flip over to Windows now, and I'm just gonna open that window where it was saved. So here we have two files. Okay, this is the Sculpty Paint install folder. It saves it right wherever you installed it. And here's the Sculpt map. They often look like rainbowy sorts of things. And here is the texture, like it says, the texture map, which will be applied onto the Sculpt map so it can create the colors you see. Next, let's head into Second Life and get this show on the road. We're back on the beach and these crabs are nipping at my toes. But that's all right because we're in Second Life. Ooh, and we're going to upload Sculpties. So here's how you do it. Remember that we have a Sculpt map and the texture map that gets applied to that. And here's how it all works. You go to the File menu and you select Bulk Upload. I know there's just two, it's not really bulk, but it makes it faster nonetheless. So remember the directory where you saved them, right here with Sculpty Paint. Now I'll click this and I'll click the other one while holding the Shift key. It selects both of them. And now I'll click Open. Ooh, crabs. Give me a break. Okay, I pay 10 lindens to upload one, and there we go, to upload both of them. So what we have here now, the sculpt map and the texture map, let's close both of these, and let's go to our inventory into the textures folder. They are these ones at the top here. And we're going to create a new cube at first, so right click and create. A new cube has been born, rest into the world. Let's make it a big object, however. Under the Object tab, let's change it to 10 by 10 by 10 because we want a really grand flower, something awesomely big. Right-click it again, edit, and lift it off the ground. So it's just touching the ground. And then change the building block type here to Sculpted. And you'll notice by default it looks like a spear and it has this rainbowy Sculpt map. A good question that often asks is, it's kind of like an apple there, that often gets asked is, how do you know the difference between what's meant to be applied as a sculpt texture there? Well, aside from simple experimentation, currently they have the same icon, so it's difficult to differentiate. However, if you look at it, it will often look kind of rainbowy like that, with a color gla gradient representing the depth and coordinates of how it will be defined in world. To make better visual sense of that, let's have a quick look in the library. So I go down here into the library folder in our inventory and then go to textures. So we have some sample sculpt textures in here. And then you'll notice, okay, these are the sculpt textures and these are the surface textures that get applied as uh, texture maps. And then we can open one. So for example, something that would be an apple would look like, and it doesn't look much like an apple when it's there, but it's got this kind of uh, rainbowy look. And depending on what you, you choose, but they will usually look very psychedelic. I like that one. <laughs> I like the colors of that one. So let's just close those out and let's apply the one we have, which is the one without the word texture in there. So it's this sculpt one. It has a very cryptic sort of name at first, but let's click and drag that on, okay? And release that. And you'll notice it starts as a spear, but as it reads this, then it will form into the shape that we expected. The flower, remember, it's starting to look more like it. We're also gonna wanna rotate this, so click this and rotate it here in world so it stands upright as most flowers do. And let's raise it a little, so back to position, and let's get it off the ground a little. Or maybe we'll, maybe we'll just squash the crabs <laughs> for all they've done. Now, go to the texture tab, and see right here, now drag this is the texture map, the surface texture map to be precise. Click and drag this, and then it will apply it onto the surface of the sculpted prim. Ooh, look at that. Look what we've got. It's pink at the top. Remember how the colors looked in Sculpty Paint and compare it. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar. And like with other prim types, you can, of course, you can stretch, you can resize it if you so wish. More advanced, ooh, it's like an accordion flower. Do, 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 do. You can uh, 
I mean, you can't edit some of the more esoteric parameters because those are done in other modeling apps. And I should also mention that if you're familiar with other 3D modelers like Maya, Moto, Blender, or even Wings 3D, that Sculpty Paint can export, it can save to OBJ files. So you can conceivably, and there are a few problems I think with it, it's still an alpha phase, but you can try to use it as part of your rendering and your workflow pipeline. So what you can also do now, of course, is, well, you can tint it, and you can really, well, that's too green, but I think it's fine the way it is. One really cool thing is shiny with Sculpties. So let's set the shininess to medium and see how cool that looks. It gets even cooler if you combine it with the power of wind light, world menu, environment settings, and sunset to give this a really beachy feel. And look at that. Let me just close this clutter. And can you look at the beauty in that? Can you see that? This is not an infomercial, but it looks freaking awesome. No, this is not a home shopping channel either. But we've just made a flower in like, what, 10 minutes or so? And you can do this too. Pick it up, and you're going to want to learn more about Sculpties, I guarantee, after getting dipping your toes into this great ocean. So also visit our wiki. There's a lot of really, really excellent, savvy, smart, helpful residents who have put together information about how to use and make sculpted prims to import in the Second Life with more advanced 3D applications. But Sculpty Paint is just so nice and fun to get started with. Now I'm going to fly to the top of my flower and admire the world. Enjoy your Second Life and make a Sculpty. Hey, send it to me. 